अच्छा अच्छा हाँ ओके ठीक है क्वेश्चन चैट पे आएंगे ना इसकी पर कौन है ओके सो वेलकम एवरीवन टू दिस लाइव सेशन ऑन नॉन लिनियर एंड एडेप्टिव कंट्रोल आई होप यू एंजॉयड वाचिंग द लेक्चर्स एंड इफ यू हैव एनी क्वेश्चन यू कैन आस्क मी सो द ओनली कंडीशन फॉर फॉर द क्वेश्चंस फॉर दिस सेशन इज दैट यू ओनली आस्क मी क्वेश्चंस रिलेटेड टू द कोर्स सो आई डोंट आस्क मी क्वेश्चंस व्हिच आर नॉट uh part of the uh, technical content that we covered during the course okay so you can write your questions and i'll be very happy to answer okay so Okay, so I have I have a question from uh, a student Surinder, and uh, he wants to know what book for a uh, you know uh, what book would be good for nonlinear control other than Khalid and Slotin. So uh, I would say Khalid and Slotin are uh, the fundamental text in nonlinear systems and control. Uh, so. Uh, i would say that you stick to khalid and slotin and and before you do khalid it's better to 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 do slotin uh because the treatment in slotin is um, easier to understand if you are new to the subject and uh and, and then you uh, slowly uh, start looking at khalid because khalid is, is a more rigorous uh, text more mathematical so uh yeah and, and then for adaptive uh, uh, control i had mentioned some texts uh, uh, if you look at the web page for the course then i had mentioned uh, that there are some texts available online uh, for example the uh, one uh, uh, adaptive control tutorial by ainu and sun uh, so so that one is a good book then uh, so and that that book is available uh, uh, online as well uh, and and then there is another good book by narendra and anaswami which is uh, which which is non uh, adaptive stable adaptive system by uh, narendra and anaswami so i think uh, those would be good text to uh, refer for adaptive control okay i hope i have answered your question we move on So I have to go on that one. Okay. So then uh, I have another question. Of, I'm working on nonlinear model predictive control development, uh, and then that's it. No, I think this question. Next time. Okay. Okay. Uh, so please, uh, at present. A real-time example to design controller using our methods or give research paper links. So all the methods that we have done, those are all uh, those can be used for real-time control. And uh, and 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 as to how to implement such controllers, uh, uh, you can you can certainly implement that. Uh, Uh, first, as a simulation in MATLAB. Of course, we did not do any simulation examples in MATLAB. I think the next question is also talking about MATLAB's uh, simulation. So, uh, yeah, I think uh, for the next part of the course, if uh, you know, I, I plan to extend this course uh, later on. So, 
So then I will have uh, MATLAB uh, simulation uh, uh, questions as assignment uh, questions. Uh, but but for now, I did not want to introduce uh, uh, MATLAB simulation in this course. But it's not very hard to, to uh, do a simulation in MATLAB. Uh, uh, you could make use of uh, the embedded MATLAB function block and uh, and there you could you you could uh, also you, you could do your dynamics uh, as well as your control design so you could have two blocks one uh, with with the dynamics of the system and the other one which contains the uh, the controller and uh, you could simply write a, a, a you know a, a code to implement an adaptive controller uh, which is uh, connected to uh, some system. So I, I think uh, implementing this controller would be uh, similar to implementing any other controller. There is there is uh, no real difference. If you if you know how to implement a PID controller, then the only additional um, uh, complexity here is that uh, that you have time varying gains. And how these gains uh, change with time is dictated by a differential equation. So if you know how to uh, how to implement a differential equation, so if you're talking about an analog circuit, then you could easily implement a differential equation using your amplifiers and adders uh, and integrators. So using adders, amplifiers, and integrators, you could implement a differential equation, right? And 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 these. Uh, uh, adaptive controllers are, 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 and even the system dynamics, they can be represented using ODEs. So if you know how to implement ODEs, you can implement this in hardware as well. Okay. For MATLAB simulation, we'll talk about uh, uh, that in the next part of the course. Okay. So uh, then I move on to the, the next question, which is on you know, how to use MATLAB and uh, From the research point of view, which are the recent publications in IEEE journals in this, this area? Which further references can be read for further research? What are the unexplored areas in the topic? See, this area is, uh, it, it has a lot of uh, unexplored areas. I mean, of course, a lot of work has been done in adaptive control. But uh, if you look at my web page, go to the research part. So I have mentioned some problems that I have been recently working on. Uh, uh, for example, the problem of parameter convergence. So uh, in, in, in uh, the lectures, I talk about the fact that we cannot uh, guarantee parameter convergence uh, unless a restrictive uh, persistence of excitation condition is satisfied. So we did not go into details uh, in this part of the course. But in the next part, I will go into details of that. But convergence of parameters in adaptive control is certainly a big area. And then the other big area is how can and uh, how can we integrate some uh, some data driven aspect in adaptive control? How can we introduce some machine learning uh, aspect in adaptive control? So those are other areas uh, of importance. So uh, yeah, it's difficult to say which are the recent publications because there are lots of them, and uh, you just have to uh, look at uh, good journals in this area. Uh, for example. Transactions on automatic control, Automatica, uh, Systems and Control Journal, uh, IEEE uh, Control System Letters. So these are some top journals in the area of control systems. So if you if you have access to them, then uh, you should be able to find uh, papers in adaptive control. But yeah, adaptive control is is, is useful whenever you have. Uh, systems with uncertainties, uh, and, and and you want to uh, you have you want to have an adaptive uh, element in your in your control design, uh, which adapts to these uncertainties. So, um, so it's it's a very uh, relevant uh, a problem, and yeah. So, I think we move on to the next question then. How? Uh, can we use uh, MRAC or general adaptive control to control stochastic system described by stochastic differential equations? Can you kindly point to some papers? Okay, so I mean this is a little out of uh, uh, you know uh, the content that we covered, but yes, uh, 
we could use adaptive controllers for uh, stochastic settings as well but it would require a different tool set to analyze those systems so uh, so we have not really covered that uh, aspect but yeah the answer to your question is yes we can do that and uh, some papers uh, i mean it will be hard for me to pull out papers right now but uh, you could search for stochastic adaptive control or stochastic uh, model reference adaptive control and if you can find good papers in um, in in the journals that i just mentioned then uh, i mean those are the good papers in this area yeah but i don't work, really work on stochastic adaptive control so yeah i can't really say much about that okay so we move on how relevant is adaptive control in this ai and machine learning era and how to exploit big data in adaptive control or control in general yeah so i mean this is a general question as i said uh, adaptive control is used for systems which uh, which are uncertain that means we don't have complete knowledge of the system dynamics and ai and machine learning they also are used for a similar uh, problem because uh, we don't know much about the environment or the system and using data we try and 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 make some sense uh, uh make some sen sense of the environment so uh there's definitely a huge scope of uh, of combining machine learning and ai in control as i mentioned uh data that you get along the system trajectory so uh the input output data that 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 you get along the system trajectory it contains rich information so uh if we can we can uh, we can use uh, exploit that information in fact some of the recent papers that i have written we have actually used some data along the system trajectories to uh, do better uh, adaptive control get a parameter convergence uh, if you look at some of uh, the recent uh, conferences and control there you will find that there are uh, uh, lots of uh, workshops and sessions on how to combine machine learning and ai into control system so so it has a, it has a huge it is in fact very relevant in uh, in today's era of ai and machine learning that we actually exploit this data the the advantage with adaptive control and control in general is that we can give guarantees on stability and robustness whereas if you look at uh, ai and machine learning they give you good efficient optimal algorithms but they do not give you guarantees on uh, on stability and robustness so if you combine the two it will be a good marriage because you get the best of both worlds you get the guarantee and uh, and and the robustness properties of control systems and uh, then you also get the uh, the learning flavor uh the data driven flavor coming from ai and machine learning so yeah it is very relevant okay so we move on okay so uh the next question is uh, the exam is of uh, subjective or objective type and it will be of how many marks so uh it will be uh, so i uh, so um, i don't remember the mark i think it was 50 marks uh but uh, yeah the, the exam is of subjective type so it will be different from the assignment uh, that that you uh, looked at uh, you will be required to um, to do an entire control design uh, using yapanov based stability analysis so you you should be well versed with uh, control design using yapanov uh, analysis right okay so we move on please answer how to assume a yapanov candidate function for a particular dynamics we explain with some examples so uh in fact this has been uh, uh this has been one of the talking points uh, uh, in the uh, nonlinear control community for a long time how do you come up with a yapanov uh function candidate or yapanov function for a system dynamics so this is uh uh as i said uh there is no one answer to this there is no systematic or a cookbook way to uh to come up with a lyapunov function uh for a particular system dynamics and having said that during the course we saw that uh, there are some uh some good uh uh 
intuitive uh, Lyapunov function candidates that, that we could consider. So a good choice is sum of squares of the error states. So that is the first thing that you would consider uh, and, and see if it works out. And um, you have to consider positive definite functions, of course, uh, uh, and, and then if they're radially unbound, uh, radially unbounded and depressant, then uh, then you can, in fact, uh, get a stronger stability result. If not, you know, you could you could uh, simply start off with a positive definite function. Uh, for example, the sum of the squares of the error states, and then and then see if it works out. If it doesn't, at least that analysis will give you some pointers as to what you should use in the Lyapunov function to cancel out some stuff in the dynamics that you don't like. So that is that should be the uh, motivation behind choosing a Lyapunov function. So you are given a certain uh, error dynamics. You want to make sure that the error goes to zero or the error stays bounded. So there must be some terms in the dynamics which are useful, some terms which are not so useful. So how do we uh, how do we account for terms which are not so useful? For example, these are positive terms. Uh, so, so your control design and the Apunov function uh, choice uh, have to go hand in hand. Okay, you cannot just choose the controller and then choose the Apunov function candidate to, to to satisfy the stability analysis. It has to be uh, a process where you have to go back and forth between control design and the Apunov function design. But there is no. Uh, there is no one way to, to come up with a Lyapunov function. Uh, it, there is no systematic way. If you look at Khalil's book, he talks about some ways uh, in, 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 I think, chapter three. Uh, for certain systems, you could come up with Lyapunov function, uh, functions, but, but not nonlinear systems in general. OK, okay so uh, we move on. How is the describing function method? So I'm not going to talk about describing function methods in, in, in um, uh, this course, so let's not uh, let's talk about it. We'll skip that question. Okay, so when there is more than one equilibrium point in a system, none of the equilibrium points can be globally stable. That is true. If there are multiple equilibrium points, then you cannot prove global stability for any equilibrium point. So, so that is that is definitely true. I don't know what the question is, but that comment is certainly true. How to check for different kinds of uh, uh, stability of a system. So, uh, so yeah. So you would like to get. Uh, uh, you would have to choose the Lyapunov function to analyze the stability, right? And as I said, these uh, Lyapunov functions are, uh, analysis is a sufficient condition for stability. So if you if you don't uh, if you don't get Lyapunov stability, that does not mean that the system is unstable. That uh, could mean that you you could try with another Lyapunov function candidate, and and see if it works out. Uh, and 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 so instability is hard to prove, but stability is is uh, easier to prove using Lyapunov analysis. And uh, and and say that you choose a Lyapunov function candidate, and you you get to Lyapunov stability. That means stable in the sense of Lyapunov. But there could be another Lyapunov function using which you could prove asymptotic stability or exponential stability. So um, yeah, so you, you could only, uh, uh, you cannot for sure say uh, what is the best stability result which is uh, possible for a particular system, unless you solve the differential equation and, and prove that the you know system is either stable, unstable, asymptotically stable, or exponentially stable. But Lyapunov analysis is a sufficient uh, condition, and uh, yeah, it it it, uh, it depends uh, a lot on your Lyapunov function uh, and uh, the intuition that uh, you use to choose the Lyapunov function candidate. Yeah, but there is no there is no short short way to determine different kinds of stability using Lyapunov analysis. And and just to complete that question, um, uh, I mean, using Lyapunov analysis, if your v is positive definite, v dot is negative semi-definite, you get the equilibrium point as Lyapunov stable. If you get v dot to be negative definite, then you can say asymptotic stability. If for some Lyapunov function, you could uh, 
uh, also uh, you know get it in terms of uh, you v dot as min less than equal to minus alpha v then you could say exponential stability if you get it in the form v dot less than equal to minus alpha v plus some constant c then you could uh, conclude uh, exponential uh, global uniform ultimate boundedness of the state so yeah these are the different uh, uh, you know some of the ways uh, uh, which we can the apno analysis can be used to uh, determine stability okay so what is the step by procedure by which i can check for all possible kind of stability of one system okay so as i said there is no step by step procedure and that is in fact uh, uh, you 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 may consider that that that's a downside to to this uh, uh, an kind of uh, um, a way of uh, doing uh, stability analysis but the upside is that uh, you also get to be more creative in terms of control design there is no um, set procedure so uh, if you compare that with linear systems where you have uh, say a linear quadratic regulator where there is a set procedure for uh, you know coming up with the uh, the uh, you know you just have to solve the riccati equation and you get the Uh, the p matrix and the k the k matrix for the gain uh, which is required to optimally uh, control a system and you could also uh, do a pole placement where you can place a pole wherever you want if the linear system is uh, stabilizable so all that is possible in the linear system domain but non linear system you get to be more creative in control design there is no step by step procedure to design controllers for non linear systems yeah okay so we move on uh to the next question x dot is equal to f of x uh, comma u comma omega where omega is a system parameter which varies with input u and or output y okay and u is the input and y is the output is the above system a time variant system okay so as i mentioned in the class uh if Uh, you have systems of the form x dot equals f of x comma u uh, in this case comma omega and on the right hand side you have explicit dependence on time then you get a time varying system now if if u of t which is your control is 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 uh, designed as a uh, as a feedback for example if u of t is designed as minus k of x right because you uh, unless you know what u and omega are you cannot say whether the system is time varying or time invariant but let's say u is equal to minus kx okay and omega is equal to 0 let's assume that then everything on the right hand side is only dependent on the states so then it's a time invariant system but now if u uh, has uh, say minus kx u is equal to minus kx plus sin of t okay just a hypothetical case then it becomes the time varying system uh and say if 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 u is equal to minus kx or some or whatever u is and omega is always a you know an explicitly time dependent quantity then this system is always time varying okay so uh if if you are here saying that omega is a system parameter but if it's a time varying system parameter because you say omega of t if it's a constant system parameter then your uh the fact that this is time varying or time invariant depends on how you choose your u uh but but if omega is a time varying parameter then the uh, then you don't even have to look at what u uh, uh could be you you can just straight uh, straight away say that uh, that this would be a time uh time varying system right okay so we move on uh in an rc circuit if the resistance r changes based on the present value of the input and or output then will the system be called time invariant so uh um yeah time uh, when then will the system be called uh, use this in an rc circuit the resistance r okay so you have given two uh, questions here so one is that uh, in an rc circuit so in an rc circuit in rc circuit if you just consider where resistance and uh, capacitance are constants there of course it's a, it's a time invariant system 
But now if you say that the resistance changes based on the present value of the input. So uh, I'm just trying to think of, of an example where the resistance could change with the input uh, and or the output. Then, um, uh, so then your system parameter is dependent on the input, right? And uh, if the input is, uh, is time varying, is explicitly time varying, right? I mean, you have to give me the exact expression for what your input and uh, this, I mean, how does resistance change with the input? Because uh, uh, if, if, the, uh, if the input is a, uh, is, is a time varying signal, right? Uh, then, then it's a time varying system, right? And if R changes based on the present value of input, which means that the parameter changes uh, based on some 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 uh, function of time, then it's a time varying system. Okay. Uh, but but if R is uh, if R changes based on the output or the state, right? Then then it is still a, a time invariant system. For example, if R uh, changes uh, uh, based on say the state of this system is the is the current, right? And R changes based on the current, then the right hand side would still be a function of the state, right? But if R changes based on some uh, some explicitly time varying function, for example, R is equal to say let's consider R is equal to uh, ten sine t, then uh, then of course it's a, you know the right hand side becomes uh, explicitly dependent on time and and uh, yeah so that become the time varying system. So in the second case you consider the RC circuit where the resistance changes based on external temperature and temperature is varying randomly then of course the system will be time time varying because your temperature would vary based on uh, temperature is varying with time right and R changes based on the external temperature so this would be a time varying system okay so I think uh, we are done with these questions but now we have some more coming in okay so uh, uh, the system is given an x dot is equal to f of x comma u from omega, where omega is a system parameter which varies with input u and or uh, and or output same. Same question, right? U is input. So I have already answered that. So there are more questions. Okay, let me see. So uh, good, uh, uh, my question is what procedure should I follow to check for all kinds of so that I have answered uh, then. And then uh, I'm just going through the questions that you asked. Uh, how adaptive control is different from sliding mode control? Any advantage of adaptive control over sliding mode control? So the adaptive, although we did not cover sliding mode in this class, but I still answer this question. Adaptive control and sliding mode control are two different uh, uh, control strategies. Okay, adaptive control is uh, trying to, uh, to 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 adapt for the uncertain parameters uh, in the system. So it, it either adapts for the uncertain system parameters and then uses that for control. In that case, it would be indirect, or it directly adapts for the controller parameters. In that case, it would be a direct adaptive control. Uh, but but the the philosophy of adaptive control is that there is some uncertainty in the system, and I want to learn. I want to learn. Uh, uh, the, the system parameters or the control parameters uh, based on how uh, the, the tracking error uh, changes and, and I want to learn the uncertain parameters. Right? So, so it has a learning flavor to it. It has an adaptive flavor to it. Whereas sliding mode, it has a robust flavor to it. So you want to, uh, you're given an uncertainty in the system and um, if, if you know how big that uncertainty is, then, then sliding mode control uh, uh, would would try and, uh, and and use a high frequency control uh, method, for example, signum function uh, to uh, to to completely reject that disturbance. It will be treated as a disturbance. I don't want to learn uh, the the uncertain terms. I just want to reject them. So so that's a, that's a more of a worst case scenario. Okay. Whereas uh, adaptive is, is more of a, um, you know, it, 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 it varies as the, um, 
uh, the uncertainties uh, uh, also change. So it, it has a learning flavor. A sliding mode has a more robust flavor. So, so we, we move on. Both of both the methods can be used for systems with uncertainty, but one is adaptive, the other is robust. Okay. For adaptiveness of a parameter estimation or state estimation from previous data of system or any soft computing techniques that uh, need to be applied. So he's saying that can we use uh, this adaptive uh, uh, parameter estimation uh, using previous data? So yes, there are there are methods uh, where you could use uh, previous data. You could look at a very recent control technique called as concurrent learning. So there, previous data is used uh, along with the current data to learn uh, the uh, the uncertain parameters. Okay, so we move on. Uh, What is the exact meaning of depressant? So even I don't know what the exact meaning of depressant is. I have to look that up. So uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I never uh, bothered to look up the the exact meaning of uh, of depressant. Yeah. So the the only thing is that uh, we we use it when you have a time varying function and you want to upper bound that. Uh, if you could upper bound that by a positive definite function, we say that the time varying function is depressant. Right. Well, that's a good question. So I think uh, uh, we could look that up. So by taking any Lyapunov, can, it, can I prove stability? So I, I've answered this question before. Just by taking any Lyapunov uh, function candidate, it's difficult to say whether you would be able to prove stability or not. Uh, you would have to uh, rely on your intuition and, and some trial and error. And uh, uh, it's a sufficient condition for stability. So I've already answered this question. What is the exact meaning of radial and modulus? Let's please give an example. So, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, so e example of, of a system we have already encountered, right? For example, if, if I have a function uh, v of x is equal to x squared, right? So, so, so that system uh, uh, would, uh, so uh, the definition of radial and modulus is that it, it should go to uh, infinity in all the directions. So if you have multiple states, then as these states go to infinity, the function should uh, should go to infinity as well. So if you have x squared, uh, you know, as x goes to infinity, v will go to infinity. Now if you have x1 squared plus x2 squared, again, if, if x1 goes to infinity and uh, x2 squared, uh, so if, if you have X, x2 can can um, you know may not have uh, you know go to infinity but say if x1 goes to infinity then still v goes to infinity similarly if x2 goes to infinity and x1 does not have to go to infinity but still v has to v will go to infinity so uh, uh, so so the only so the uh, thing that you have to look for is so if you have multiple states x1 x2 x3 x4 what you have to look at look at is if the the norm of these states go to infinity does the function uh, uh, v of x go to infinity or not? Okay, so the norm of states uh, uh, going to infinity means even if one state goes to infinity, right? Then so you have to look at all the conditions under you know for which this norm of x goes to infinity. So that the conditions could be if one of the states goes to, goes to infinity, does v go to infinity? Right, so you have to you check that for individual states x1 to xn and see if that is true. And then you you say that you know you take uh, take take all possible uh, ways in which norm of x can go to infinity. And for all those cases, if the function also goes to infinity, then we say that it is radially unbounded. Okay. So as I said, I mean uh, uh, a more detailed treatment of radial unboundedness decrescence, which we did not cover in this course. Uh, because uh, I had assumed that uh, there is some initial background in that, and, and more details can be can be found out in in a course on nonlinear control, okay, or nonlinear systems for that matter. So uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, then, uh, how can we mathematically prove whether a function is a 
is a con is convex or not. So I mean, for that we have already. Uh, if you, if you look at uh, my later lectures, I think it was lecture nine or lecture, lecture ten. So I had I had given a condition uh, uh, on on whether uh, you know uh, on 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 how to find whether a function is convex or not. So you could refer to those lectures. You basically have to uh, to to prove uh, that. Uh, given a function f of x, if uh, f of lambda x plus uh, 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 one minus lambda y, where uh, you know x and y are are uh, are, are two points, uh, so if if that is less than equal to lambda of f of x plus uh, one minus uh, lambda of f of y, then you say that the uh, function is convex. So, in, in, in if you look at my lectures, I have also taken some examples as to uh, when certain functions uh, are convex and when they are not. So, uh, yeah, I mean the, the basic idea is if you can draw a line, uh, if you, if you have if you draw the function and if you can if you can draw a line from 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 one point to the other and does not really intersect the uh, the boundary. In uh, any way, you're always inside uh, inside uh, uh, the the function. Then uh, then you say that the function is convex. So yeah. So I think you'll have to go through uh, one of my my lectures to uh, really talk about the free experience theorem four point nine that was uh, in lecture two in detail. So I am trying to think what theorem four point nine was. Uh, because uh, I had referred to Khalil's book and um, not trying to think what it was. Can you just uh, give me an outline of that theorem and then I, I can talk about that? What is the place of adaptive control in industry? So that's a good question and it's, it's a very relevant question to ask. So in the industry, uh, many a times you would see that people are using PID control. And it works, right? Then that's why uh, people don't care to look at uh, any other control method. Uh, so as long as it works, people don't want to change it, right? And the uh, and so so the, so so the, the industry keeps using these traditional uh, PID controllers. Uh, in fact, the aircraft industry keeps uh, you know it, it sticks to Bode plots, uh, root locus, Nyquist plots. Uh, for for stability, and they don't want to look beyond that. And there is a reason behind that. For a, for for an industry like uh, an aircraft industry, you have to uh, uh, you know whatever works, you don't want to change it because uh, you know that is uh, 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 that is an industry where safety is is top priority. And if anything goes wrong, then you are talking about uh, many lives. Uh, here, so if 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 you, if they are okay with you know a, a method which works, as long as it works, they'll continue to use it. Okay, so I mean it makes sense, and and even if that method is not uh, uh, is not is not giving them optimum performance, it's all right as long as it works. As long as uh, you know uh, if, if it's not uh, uh, helping them save fuel, that's all right. As long as the stability is ensured, as long as it works, it's it's fine. So, so so that's why you know that, that's an example of industry which does not want to change. But then there are industries uh, where uh, they continue to use PD PID uh, even even though safety is not such a big issue there. But but there, in fact, adaptive control methods or model predictive control methods uh, can be used, and they are slowly finding their place in the industry. But because there are not enough people in the industry who can who actually know how to use these methods, right? For adaptive control, uh, you, you cannot just uh, uh, tune P, I, and D gains and uh, expect that it would work. You you still need uh, you know some expertise uh, in in implementing an adaptive controller. Although as I said, it, it once you implement it, you you don't really have to bother so too much about it. But then you know the the the, the first part where you are implementing an adaptive controller, you need some 
some research expertise in in this or you know, in fact model predictive control also you need some expertise and um, if you have uh, people using these controllers who are not so skilled then it be hard to use that so that's why i feel that it has it is very relevant to the industry because it can it can lead to better performance right while at the same time guaranteeing stability okay but at the same time you the industry has not caught up to it because there is some uh there is some research uh, element to it there is some uh some 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 learning that has to you know go through you 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 need to uh, have some background in this area to be able to implement this so that's why uh, the industry has not caught up to it but it's very relevant because uh, you you will always encounter systems where the system dynamics may not be exactly known there would be uncertainties there would be disturbances so uh so in that case if you want to uh, to to guarantee stability but at the same time uh, make sure that uh, you also uh, improve performance you also learn so then uh, adaptive control and a combination of adaptive control and machine learning would be a very good choice in fact if if any if you guys are interested in working in this area then then this is the is probably one of the biggest areas which is coming up how do you combine learning and control how do you combine learning and adaptive control how do you combine data with adaptive control to learn better and at the same time guarantee stability and robustness so those those two are very important uh, things okay so we move on so the next question is uh uh by uh, using the up and up function candidate what are the conditions for gus gs gas guas in terms of v dot so so we have done that uh, in lecture 2 but if i have to recap then uh, uniform stability is applicable for system which are time varying for time invariant systems uniform stability you get for free uh but if you are talking about uh uniform stability which means that uh the stability is is uniform with respect to the initial time so uh so there uh, uh you you would like that uh, you get either a uh, a uniform stable or a, a uniformly asymptotically stable result so in terms of uh, v and v dot uh, the the conditions are that v of course has to be chosen which is positive definite and uh and then it has to be decrescent and then if we get v dot as negative semi definite we say it is uh the equilibrium point is uh, is uniformly uh stable if uh, you get v dot as negative definite then you say it is uas uniformly asymptotically stable now in addition to this if the diapano function that you have chosen is Uh, readily unbounded, okay, and the uh, Yapnov function is positive definite uh, throughout the state space, and V dot is also either negative semi definite or negative definite throughout the state space. Then you can say that you get uh, either um, uh, uniform asymptotic uh, uh, global uniform stability or global uniform asymptotic stability. Okay, so so for for a uh, global result you need uh, radial and uh, radial and unboundedness of the diapano function and uh, the fact that uh, uh, th that these are uh, the diapano uh, function v is positive definite in the entire state space and v dot is at least negative semi definite in the entire state space so that is for global result for uniformity if you can uh, consider this diapano function to be decrescent then you get a uniform result okay the proofs of this theorem we did not do okay so we have more questions coming in uh, so let's uh, look at uh, yeah so can we design better controllers using adaptive control which has a uh, demonstrably better performance uh, than than pid of the industry yeah so so that's a good question so uh, the question is that okay can we design better controllers than pid of the industry so see if for a pid controller uh your your once you tune your gains p i and d they are fixed 
right? So once you have chosen such gains, those gains are set in stone unless you change it after uh, after one run, right? Uh, but an adaptive controller, you are are not are not uh, uh, fixing your say p uh, your gains. Uh, let's not even use p i n d in the adaptive control uh, context. But but yeah, so uh, you you're not really fixing your uh, your state feedback gains. They are time varying, and the way they vary is that they they vary so as to minimize the tracking error, right? So intuitively, you could think that you know these gains are not fixed; they vary to in, in such a way that the tracking error is minimized. So obviously, you could expect a better performance, right? But having said that, you could by experiments you could tune a PID controller to get similar performance. So that means uh, if if the P if, if the performance is not good, then you could again you know uh, you could change your P I and D gains. But you don't want to be doing that all the time, right? So, so that's where adaptive control comes in. Then uh, that that uh, uh, it, it 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 the the structure of the control is such that it adapts for these uh, uncertain system parameters and uncertain control parameters, and and you don't have to have to keep uh, you know uh, bother with changing changing the gains on uh, uh, after every experiment. Okay, and and uh, yeah, so. I think that I, I hope that answers uh, the question that we we could certainly prove that adaptive controllers can give you better performance than a classical PID controller. The four robust adaptive controller modifications. Uh, which one is applicable for which condition? So I'm not going going to talk about this because I've already talked about that in the lecture in detail. So we have the 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 sigma mod, the dead zone, the E modification and the projection. So in 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 some cases we uh, uh, require some assumptions. In other cases we we don't. But if I have to like quickly talk about it, then for uh, you know you of course have to go uh, to the lectures in in detail. So for dead zone, if your uh, upper bound on the disturbance is known, you could certainly use dead dead zone. Uh, sigma mod is probably the sigma mod and E mod are probably the methods which do not rely on any assumptions. But you know. Uh, the performance is uh, uh, probably a little degraded because in sigma mod you have this unlearning phenomena, and even in the E mod you 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 have some some damping term which is added to your uh, classical gradient based adaptive laws. So there would be some uh, some some loss in performance there, but at the same time it will guarantee uh, uh, robustness to disturbances. Uh, while using minimal assumptions on the disturbances and the parameters, projection is is, is a good way uh, because you don't need that uh, you don't need the damping term. You can adapt fast, right? And um, but but you know you need to know the 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 convex set in which your uh, your your unknown parameter lies. So that assumption has to be made, has to be made in in the case of projection, but. But but it can you can get good performance because uh, while you are within that convex set, you can continue to use your standard adaptive laws, and and once you reach the boundary and and you are trying to get outside of that, then you project it back to the convex set. So uh, yeah, uh, so so these are the different methods you could use based on the application. Okay, so we move on. Uh, we have uh, one more question coming in. So here so. Pawan is asking any present examples of industries or products or projects adopt that adopt uh, adaptive controllers. Yeah, if you if you actually search uh, NASA adaptive control aircraft, do a Google search on that. You'll find that uh, that uh, there is a lot of work which is being done. In fact, in the aircraft industry, I talked about the aircraft being uh, highly safety critical applications. But uh, but but e even e even that industry has now started to realize that. They also want to improve perform performance, uh, while at the same time ensuring stability and robustness. So they are looking at adaptive control methods. So one such method is L1 adaptive control. If you search for L1 adaptive control, you'll find lots of papers where they apply it to uh, to aircrafts. NASA is also working extensively in this area. So aircraft is one uh, one one big industry where uh, adaptive control. They use robotics is another industry where adaptive control is 
extensively used. So uh, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, like these are two really big examples uh, that that you could think of. Yeah. Okay. So can startups uh, uh, can disrupt the industry using model control methods, which are still stuck to PID and classical methods due to lack of expertise? Of course. Of course, you could you could come up with algorithms which are uh, which which uh, do not assume that you know everything about the environment and which are not uh, dependent on totally non-model based control. For example, PID is totally non-model based, uh, and uh, and because uh, as you rightly pointed out, there is lack of expertise of of this kind of uh, control method. The the industry has not really caught up. With these methods, and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I feel that uh, many companies can be built on the idea of uh, combining uh, adaptive control and and machine learning. So that is the technology of the future. I feel. Yeah. So we have more questions. Uh, it is proved the estimated parameters belong to L infinity during simulation. It is observed that the estimated parameters converge to a particular value. Right, so L infinity just means that your uh, parameters would essentially stay bounded, and if it if if in simulation you find that these parameters are converging to a particular value, then it just proves that you got it right. So you, I mean, they 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 are bounded. Okay. So although it satisfies the L condition, but it could have been a bounded sinusoidal type. Why it always converges to a particular value? Yeah. So L infinity condition does not really say that. You have to converge to a particular value. It just stipulates that you are bounded. So bounded means that you could be, uh, you could be a sinusoidal type uh, oscillation, or you could be just a constant uh, uh, DC signal. Uh, uh, you you could be a, a random signal as long as, for all time, uh, you 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 know uh, you stay bounded. Uh, so so yeah, an infinity does not really place a restriction on uh, on the type of these signals. It just says you are you're bounded for all time. Then that is uh, L infinity. Okay. Okay. So we have more questions. Uh, how the reference model is selected? If the actual model is a second order transfer function, can I take a first order equation as a reference model, producing the same output response? Of course you can. So you can consider a first order equation as a reference model. And you can also consider a second order uh, uh, equation. You know how first order response is. So if you want that exponential kind of uh, response, then then you could consider a first order reference model. But yet bear that in mind that your your actual plant should also be first order. If it's a second order plant, you can't use a first order reference model, right? So so that has to be kept in mind. And uh, as to how a reference model can be selected for a particular uh, system, uh, which is second order. Uh, so for that you could you could uh, think of uh, a second order uh, uh, characteristic equation where you have um, a damping ratio uh, zeta and uh, omega n. So those are the two parameters which dictate the response, right? So whether you have underdamped, overdamped, uh, critically damped, undamped. So you get all the cases. So if if you can always uh, shape the response by choosing your zeta and omega n, right? So based on how you want your rise time, your overshoot, your steady state error. There are classical methods to come up with zeta and omega n. Once you get your zeta and omega n, you basically get the transfer function for the uh, reference model, and uh, and then you could you could uh, uh, you could choose your uh, I mean then you could design a model reference adaptive controller to follow that reference model. Okay, so the question seems to have, I mean, they seem to have dried up. If uh, we, we still have uh, around five more minutes. If you have questions, I'm, I'm here. Any question which comes to mind, we can talk about it. Five minutes, but has to be relevant to the course.
Okay, so we have uh, one more coming. Please, next time you take one course on online system. Okay, sure, that's a good suggestion. So, uh, yeah, I would I would uh, like to teach a course on nonlinear systems as well. Uh, right now, what my plan is to extend this course uh, a little further. We we can include other topics uh, in in this short course and make it say a twenty week uh, twenty hour course. Uh, uh, so. Uh, I, I plan to, uh, to to record more lecture videos uh, where we can include topics such as uh, parameter convergence and adaptive control and um, other uh, maybe neural network control. So, so yeah, such such topics uh, we, we we can definitely and also uh, adaptive backstepping. So, backstepping is a is, is a useful tool for nonlinear control design, but. Uh, uh, what if your uh, system is not exactly known? Then you would have to use adaptive backstepping. So, uh, yeah, I plan to include uh, many of these uh, for uh, my next uh, uh, set of lectures. Uh, in addition, uh, I would also like to start talking about nonlinear systems and and the, the adaptive control problem for nonlinear systems. So, in the first part of the course, the objective was to expose you to different. Uh, Nonlinear uh, uh, adaptive control methods, uh, and then we used uh, a linear system as a benchmark example for that. But uh, in later lectures, I can I can talk about uh, uh, adaptive control for nonlinear systems, adaptive backstepping, parameter convergence issues, and yeah, and and yeah, there there, there are quite a few topics which we can talk about. Okay, so uh, we have, uh, can we make a stochastic actual system having noise in it and use a deterministic system of known dynamics as a reference model and make it follow it? So, uh, I mean, of course, if you have some noise in the, in, in the actual system, uh, it will be, uh, you, you could probably not say that you're, you know, following the actual system, but maybe you could think of uh, following the mean uh, state, the, the mean, the expected value of the state. You could think of following, right? So you could you could have a stochastic, uh, you could you could have a you you could construct a deterministic system, and and uh, in such a way. Uh, although I, I'm not hundred percent because I don't really work in this area, but uh, uh, you would then have to prove that the expected value of the error goes to zero, right? So, uh, but but intuitively thinking that it, it might be possible, uh, assuming some distribution of the noise, uh, it, it might be possible to to prove such a thing. <clears throat> but yeah, I can't I can't be hundred percent sure about this. Fraction order control, I'm not going to talk about. Is exam question will be design question? Yes, exam question will be. Uh, it it will have more of a design flavor. But it will be related to the stuff that we did. But you would have to go through the entire analysis. So be ready to do the entire analysis uh, in the exam. It will not be this objective type uh, questions where you just have to, uh, uh, you know, just put a tick mark. Uh, so here you would have to uh, formulate the problem statement mathematically, choose a Lyapunov function candidate, and then prove stability, and then and then conclude after the Lyapunov analysis uh, what kind of stability results you get. So, uh, so yes, so I mean, you, you have to be very rigorous with everything that we have done in the lecture videos. In fact, you should be able to derive the lecture videos by now. You should be so good that, that you should be able to derive the entire lecture video. And that is the kind of, uh, um, kind of preparation that I expect for you uh, in the exam. Okay, so we are almost done. If there are any burning questions, just one minute to go. Is there any burning questions? Uh, we can take them up. Otherwise, uh, I want to wrap this up and wish you all uh, good luck for the exam. I hope that uh, you learned something from this course and uh, uh, the response that you give will dictate how much further I will go with this course. Right? So if you if you enjoy, if you're enjoying the content, we'll do more of it in the in the coming semesters.
So we have uh, we have one more question coming. In. What selection criteria for choosing a controller? If the number of control variable increases, does it provide a better response? So uh, I mean that's a very general question. What is the selection criteria for choosing a controller? I mean that that is the uh, question that we all have been trying to answer using control design. There are so many different control strategies that you could use uh, uh, for 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 designing a controller. The the only I mean the the most but yeah if you have to talk about what qualities should a control system have then for most it should for, for most it should ensure that your uh, states are bounded you get you ensure stability and um, you also have some robustness to external disturbances to uh, modeling errors to sensor noise and you ensure some basic uh, uh, performance uh, uh, measures. So uh, I think those those are like some some criteria that you can consider for designing controllers. And as to the number of control variables uh, increasing, I mean that uh, you can't really say uh, if that would give you a better response. You can have as many control variables as you want, but if they're not properly designed, you probably get a very poor response. So I mean it, it's not the number of control variables which dictate how the response is going to be. And there are many factors which come into play. Okay, so uh, uh, we wait on. Okay, so I think uh, uh, I see that there are no other questions coming in. I hope that uh, I've been able to answer most of the questions, uh, if not in detail, but at least to get an idea. Uh, and uh, yeah, just uh, good luck for the exam and uh, bye from here.